Hello, in today's video, we shall learn in detail about genus Ectocarpus, which is a brown alga. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding about the vegetative body and structure of Ectocarpus and also its mode of reproduction along with alternation of generation in its life cycle. Let us begin with the structure of the vegetative body of Ectocarpus. Ectocarpus is a genus of small filamentous marine brown alga within the order Ectocarpales. They may remain attached to the substratum with the help of basal rhizoids. Some are epiphytic and few are parasitic. The thallus of Ectocarpus are eukaryotic, profusely branched and septate with uniseriate heterotrichous filaments consisting of prostrate and erect branches. The prostrate portion creeps on the soil, attaches to a substratum and forms erect branches. Branching of the thallus is always lateral. The cells of the erect branches consist of a single row of cells placed end to end and are polysiphonous in nature. There are variations in the growth of the thallus. It is apical in the prostrate system while intercalary in the erect system. Trichothallic growth is common in ectocarpus in which some meristematic cells add to the length of terminal hair and the other meristematic cells form the branches. Prostrate thalli help in anchorage by means of the rhizoids while erect thalli performs photosynthesis and bears reproductive organs. The main pigment of the member of Pheophysiae is fucosanthin, which imparts the characteristic brown coloration. The plant body is genetically differentiated into haploid and diploid plant body. By the way, if you are getting some value out of this video, please like and share the video so that all of us can learn, unlearn and relearn together. Also, please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos. Next, let us understand the structure of Ectocarpus plant body. The cells of Ectocarpus plant body are cylindrical or rectangular. There is a protective cell wall made up of outer pectin and inner cellulose layer. The cell wall shows the presence of a gelatinous substance composed of algin and fucoidin. Inner to the cell wall is the cell membrane which surrounds the protoplast. Each cell is uninucleate and the cytoplasm shows number of disc shaped chromatophores associated with naked pyrenoids. The chromatophores of ectocarpus possess chlorophyll A, chlorophyll C, beta carotene and fucosanthin. Mature cell shows the presence of large and numerous vacuoles and also few small vesicles. All other eukaryotic organelles are also present. 
Reserved food of Ectocarpus is manitol. Let us understand the mode of reproduction in Ectocarpus. Ectocarpus can reproduce both sexually and asexually. Asexual reproduction. Diploid plant body develops two types of sporangia, namely plurilocular sporangia or neutral sporangia and unilocular sporangia. Plurilocular sporangia is produced from the terminal cell of a short branch. The apical cell enlarges and forms the sporangial initial which undergoes mitotic divisions followed by wall formation resulting in the formation of a number of small cubical cells arranged in vertical rows. There is no reduction division. Therefore, each cell of plurilocular sporangium contains diploid nuclei. Each diploid unit gets metamorphosed into zoospores which bear two flagella of unequal size. These zoospores get liberated through an apical or lateral opening of the sporangium and later give rise to a new sporophytic plant. These plants bear unilocular and plurilocular sporangia. The plurilocular sporangia has no role in alternation of generation. Next are the unilocular sporangia. They too develop from the apical cell of short lateral branches. The apical cell enlarges, forms sporangial initial, which undergoes meiotic division followed by equational division resulting in the formation of 32 to 64 haploid nuclei. Each sporangium is stocked, globular or pear shaped. It has dense cytoplasm with diploid nucleus and number of chromatophores. There is no wall formation. The cytoplasm surrounds each haploid nucleus and each gets transformed into biflagellate haploid zoospores or zoomeospores. The flagella are unequal in size and are laterally inserted. The tip of the sporangium dissolves and the zoospores are liberated. They swim for a short period, retract their flagella and get attached to a substratum. Cell wall is formed, followed by formation of a germ tube which gives rise to the prostrate filament which forms the haploid sexual plant or a new gametophyte. Now, let us understand sexual reproduction in ectocarpus. The sexual life cycle of ectocarpus has a haplodiplontic life cycle. It consists of an alternation between haploid male and female gametophyte and diploid sporophyte generation. Ectocarpus is either isogamous or anisogamous. Gametes are formed on haploid plants after the germination of zoospores liberated from the unilocular sporangia. The plants bear 
plurilocular gametangia. Gametangia are multicellular, sessile or short stocked, elongated conical structures. The contents of the apical cell repeatedly divide by transverse and longitudinal divisions followed by wall formation. Protoplast of each cubical compartment gets converted into a single uninucleate biflagellate haploid gamete. These gametes are liberated through an apical opening. In ectocarpus silicolosis, the gametes are isogamous, but fusion takes place between gametes of the different plants. In ectocarpus secundus, the female gamete is bigger, while the male gamete is small and more active. Next, let us learn about fertilization in ectocarpus. In isogamy, two gametes from different plants of similar shape and size unite and fuse together to form a zygote. But in anisogamy, the bigger female gamete comes to rest and gets surrounded by a number of male gametes. This process is known as clump formation. Only one of the male gamete fuses with the female gamete and forms the zygote through plasmogamy and karyogamy. The zygote gives rise to a diploid sporophytic plant body which may bear unilocular or plurilocular sporangia. Occasionally, when a gamete fails to meet a gamete of opposite sex, it directly gives rise to parthenosporophyte, thus constituting an act of parthenogenesis. The ectocarpus in its life cycle exhibits an alternation of generation. Finally, let us try to understand alternation of generation in ectocarpus. Isomorphic alternation of generation is exhibited by ectocarpus. Alternation of morphologically similar gametophytic haploid and sporophytic diploid generation is seen in the life cycle of ectocarpus. The sporophyte is diploid and develops two types of sporangia namely plurilocular sporangia and unilocular sporangia. Mitozoospores are produced by mitosis in plurilocular sporangia. Myozoospores are produced meiotically in unilocular sporangia. The mitozoospores germinate into a diploid sporophyte. The myozoospores germinate to give rise to a haploid gametophytic plant. The gametophyte develops plurilocular gametangia in which haploid gametes are produced. These gametes fuse to form a diploid zygote. The zygote germinates into a diploid sporophytic plant. In some species, parthenogenesis takes place and results in new gametophytic generation. So today, we have learnt in detail about structure of the vegetative body of ectocarpus, its cell structure, mode of reproduction both asexual and sexual, and also isomorphic alternation of generation. 
I have some practice questions for you. Please share your answers in the comment section below. You can pause the video and write down the questions if you like. Thank you so much for your time and participation. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos. Also, if you want to discuss any particular topic in biology, please mention that in the comment section below. I'll see you there. Goodbye. All the best.